Thank you very much, Juanita. You have been fantastic in your kind words. This is truly an incredible organization. Thanks also to the members of NFIB's Board of Directors, who I've spent time with, just took some wonderful pictures with, good-looking group, I have to tell you, and Board Chairman Steve Schramm. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Together, you've been a powerful voice for America's small businesses, and now you have a true friend and ally in the White House. You know that. You know that. I'm honored to be with you today for, really, this historic celebration. This was something, when they asked me to do, I didn't think about it for more than about a second. I said, I'll do it. You are very special people. And let me officially say, on behalf of the American people, happy 75th anniversary to the National Federation of Independent Business. I tell you, you deserve a big happy. Joining us today are some terrific people who work very, very hard. And actually, they are starting to get a lot of credit. In fact, we had our highest poll numbers today. Can you believe this? So they're doing a good job. Our highest. You know the old story when I was campaigning. I only mentioned that when we're doing well in the polls. When we're not doing well, I don't talk about it. Like all of you, you do the same thing. Secretary Mnuchin, Steve, thank you very much. Doing a great job. Secretary Acosta, Alex. And Administrator Linda McMahon. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. They are fighting hard for small business and for large business. They're fighting hard for our country, frankly, each and every day, and they're doing a terrific job. Most importantly, I want to thank all of you, the small business owners who are the engine of American prosperity. And I, I, you know, I've been saying it for a long time, but you really are. You look at even the stats, you look at the numbers, you look at the taxes that are paid, you look at the jobs, it's all about small business. So small business is really, I say this to Linda McMahon all the time, head of small business, but small business is really big, right, Linda? It's really big. For many years, Washington tried to hold you back and tear you down, crushing the American small business with crippling taxes and oppressive regulation. But all that has changed starting in November 2016. The Trump administration is with you, and we are with you 100 percent and always will be. Instead of punishing entrepreneurship, we are now promoting entrepreneurship. Especially that guy in the corner. Main Street is thriving and America is winning once again. You know, we're respected again. This country is respected again. Before going any further today, I want to take a moment to address something you've been reading a lot about, the illegal immigration crisis on our southern border. It's been going on for many, many decades and many years, and it has its ups and its downs, and all we need is good legislation, and we can have it taken care of. And we have to get the Democrats to go ahead and uh, work with us, because as a result of Democrat-supported loopholes in our federal laws, most illegal immigrant families and minors from Central America who arrive unlawfully at the border cannot be detained together or removed together, only released. These are crippling loopholes that cause family separation, which we don't want. As a result of these loopholes, roughly half a million illegal immigrant family units and minors from Central America have been released into the United States since 2014 at unbelievably great taxpayer expense. Nobody knows how much we're paying for this monstrosity 
that's been created over the years, legislation that nobody has any idea what they're doing. They don't even know what it means. And you have to see this. It's a mile high. Child smugglers exploit the loopholes, and they gain illegal entry into the United States, putting countless children in danger on the perilous trek to the United States. They come up through Mexico. Mexico does nothing for us. You hear it here. They do nothing for us. They could stop it. They have very, very strong laws. Try staying in Mexico for a couple of days. See how long that lasts, okay? They do nothing for us, and I see it through NAFTA. I see with the $100 billion plus that they make on trade through NAFTA, one of the worst deals ever made by this country, a disaster. And we're trying to equalize it. And it's not easy, but we're getting there. It's not easy. And we're going to take care of our American farmers, and we're going to take care of our manufacturers and our manufacturing jobs. But they're making unbelievable amounts of money. And that's not including the drugs that are flowing through our border because we have no wall and we have no protection. The drugs that are coming in from Mexico and through the southern border is disgraceful. So we'll see whether or not we can make a reasonable NAFTA deal. Or deal doesn't have to be called NAFTA. We can do one-on-one -on -one with Mexico, one-on-one -on -one with Canada. And by the way, Canada, they like to talk. They're our great neighbor. They fought World War II with us. We appreciate it. They fought World War I with us, and we appreciate it, but we're protecting each other. There was a story two days ago in a major newspaper talking about people living in Canada, coming into the United States, and smuggling things back into Canada because the tariffs are so massive. The tariffs to get common items back into Canada are so high that they have to smuggle them in. They buy shoes and they wear them. They scuff them up. They make them sound old or look old. No, we're treated horribly. Dairy, dairy, 275% tariff. So basically, that's a barrier, without saying it's a barrier. And I told them, if they don't change their ways, so we have a tremendous deficit. People say, well, there's really not that much of a deficit. Well, they're not including two things, energy and timber. And those are the two big things when it comes to Canada. Now, we have to change our ways. We can no longer be the stupid country. We want to be the smart country. <laughs> So hopefully, we'll be able to work it out with Canada. We have very good relationships with Canada. We have for a long time, and hopefully that'll work out. But Canada is not going to take advantage of the United States any longer, and Mexico is not going to take advantage of the United States any longer. And when I campaigned, I said, I will either renegotiate NAFTA or I'll terminate it. And we'll start from an even base. And people are afraid of that, you know? I've had so many people, they come up, they say, oh, please don't terminate NAFTA. They say, but it's no good. Yeah, but we know what we have. It's true. <laughs> people are worried because they know what they have. If you look at, I love the American farmer more than anybody. They have backed me. I love the American farmer. <laughs> and by the way, I'll tell you in a little while, because it's in one of my notes, the American farmer virtually will not have to pay any more estate tax on their farms when they pass away and they want to leave it to their children. And that goes for almost all small businesses. You won't have the estate tax to pay anymore, which was crippling. That was in our bill. I see a young guy is standing up now. He's too young to be leaving it, so that means he's a beneficiary. I don't know. Don't act too happy. There's a wealthy father there. Don't act too happy. 
Is that your father? Oh, wow. It, the answer is yes. Okay. And you know what? You're both happy, okay? You're both happy, and I'm honored to have done it because it was destroying the estate tax, small businesses, and farms. Destroying them. People were mortgaging them to the hilt to pay the tax, and then they couldn't pay the interest on the mortgage, and the banks would take them away. You don't have to pay the estate tax any longer. In most cases. In other words, loopholes, yeah, if your farm's really big, you start to pay. But it's a pretty big level, you know that, pretty big. That would have to be a pretty big farm. These loopholes have created a massive child smuggling trade. Can you believe this? In this day and age, we're talking about child smuggling. We're talking about women smuggling. In this day and age, the worst it's been in history because the internet has led to this. You think back 200, 500, 1,000 years ago, the worst it's ever been. Women smuggling, child smuggling. Since last year, child smugglers, who are very, very sophisticated, they've learned the loopholes in this horrible, rotten system that the Democrats have to help us fix, because we need the votes. We could have the Republican votes 100%. We still don't have enough votes. People don't understand that. We need Democrat votes to get it fixed. These smugglers know these rules and regulations better than the people that drew them. As a result, there has been a 325 percent increase in minors and a 435 percent increase in the smuggling or attempted smuggling of families and minors into our country. We're stopping them all the time, by the thousands. But they still get through. We have no wall. We have no border security. Without a border, you don't have a country. You don't have a country. <laughs> Under current law, we have only two policy options to respond to this massive crisis. We can either release all illegal immigrant families and minors who show up at the border from Central America, or we can arrest the adults for the federal crime of illegal entry. Those are the only two options, totally open borders or criminal prosecution for lawbreaking. And you want to be able to do that. We don't want people pouring into our country. We want them to come in through the process, through the legal system. And we want, ultimately, a merit-based system where people come in based on merit. Keep in mind, those who apply for asylum legally at ports of entry are not prosecuted. The fake news media back there doesn't talk about that. They're fake. They are helping. They are helping these smugglers and these traffickers like nobody would believe. They know it. They know exactly what they're doing. And it should be stopped, because what's going on is very unfair to the people of our country. And they violate the law. People that come in violate the law. They endanger their children in the process. And frankly, they endanger all of our children. You see what happens with MS-13, where your sons and daughters are attacked violently? Kids that never even heard of such a thing are being attacked violently, not with guns, but with knives, because it's much more painful. In inconceivable. Here we are talking about business. Inconceivable that we even have to talk about MS-13 and other gangs. They attack violently, the most painful way possible. And a bullet is too quick. And we're allowing these people into our country? Not with me. We're taking them out by the thousands. We're taking them out by the thousands. 